So this is how I would find them. Graphically, you can see approximately this is minus 0.3. And log omega C naught, here is minus 0.3. Here is minus 0.6. So about minus 0.44. Is a minus point, yeah, 44. So from the graph, so from body of G U prime of S, we find log omega C naught approximately was minus point forty four. You see how I was in a minute. And log of the magnitude of G U prime at I omega C naught approximately was it minus point. Yeah. I have a question. Um, you say that that didn't show if it was a stable because it because it's not a body plot of G O L. But well, why do we need that if we already proved that it was stable by the Ruth array? Ruth array doesn't work for tangulate, remember? It's very risky to find This has no problem with the tangulate. You can't rely on tangulate. Oh, no, no, but the approximation. So the Ruth array I would use as a preliminary step get some values that look like they will work, and then I will do a bodice to bring criteria to verify that it's correct. No. Right. You said the reason the approximation isn't good here is why was that again? You said using approximation doesn't work here. It, it, it is never while the bodice to bring criteria is correct what you're getting, okay. so only that way, and by then, but that may show you that it's stable, but in reality it may be unstable. What if the both plot showed you that you're stable, you're stable. Mm -hmm. In any case, for this definitely you have to go to the All right, so let's go back to the program. If we scroll, how do I find things accurately? Scroll until we find phase like minus one eight. So it, it becomes more and more negative. We are here minus 89, minus 126. I want to be too far. OK, I don't have exactly minus 180, but I have minus 179.7 and minus 180.2. It's kind of the average between those two. So you can see log AR is minus 0.298. And how about? Frequency, log omega, minus 0.438, minus 0.437, and do too bad. So minus 0.44, and do too bad. So about minus, let's see, which one is closer? That is closer, so minus 0.437. So more accurately from table,
control, for PI control, and for ID of PID. So that is equal to Is this correct? Selena, why are you shaking your head now? to use a lower control again. 
So you divide now by 2.2. So I drop from minus 0.99 to minus 0.90. The y, that is equal to 3u divided by 1.2. And of course, there is no tau d. For idea PID, now you can use a higher KC. So that's going to be equal to KU divided by 1.7. Tau i is going to be low, which means more aggressive integral action. So derivative action allows you to have more aggressive control. Higher Kc, lower tau i, within tau d. So that is equal to Pu divided by 2. Remember, higher Kc, more aggressive controller. Lower tau i, more aggressive controller, because the integral has 1 over tau i in front of it. And tau d will be equal to u over d. Well, so that's the single and equals method for tuning a control. Any questions? So you understand it's based on finding the ultimate gain with the body stability criteria. A natural thing would have been to have an iterative method. You guess different cases, and then you interpolate until you get to the KC that gives you amplitude ratio of omega C naught equals 1, or equivalently, log of that equals it. But instead of doing that, we can factor GOL as GU prime times the absolute value of KC. And the key thing here is the absolute value of KC is a positive real number. And positive real numbers have argument zero. So they don't add anything to the phase back plot. As a result, any transfer function will have the same crossover as a positive constant times that transfer function. Okay. And because then I can find omega C naught without any iteration, I can also have the factorization work for GU prime, and I can calculate that the absolute value of KU is 1 over GU prime at higher omega C. Are you okay, guys? Why well, the LED have to, to be ID and the other ones? What is what ID? Because, as I discussed uh, earlier, that form can never be implemented in practice, and you, as a matter of fact, you never have commercial controllers doing that. What you can implement is that times a low pass filter that smooths the noise. Okay? So, we're going to do, hopefully, an example of an industrial controller, and we'll see that the implementation automatically includes the filter. You cannot, in industrial controls, you cannot put ideal PID without a filter. You, you cannot implement it, because the reason is uh, you would have then a GOL that would give you infinite in response for a final signal. And that can never happen. Anybody else? All right, let's move on to the next topic. And so we learned the body, the body stability criteria. Let's say that I have a proposed controller, and I did the body stability criteria, and I found I had this picture. Thank you. 
I think it's behind you. I, no, 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 here. Oh, here it is, thank you. Good job, thanks. <laughs> All right, so I'm trying to start putting horns in the blockade aspect. So suppose that we had this situation. And we close the stable, this is border of GOA. Sorry. Suppose we have this border of GOA. And we close the stable. We don't know. Hmm? Uh, yeah. It's too low, yeah, right? Okay, would you feel comfortable going ahead and implementing this? Control. What are we guaranteed? What are we 100 percent sure is closed loop state? Our model. Remember, we have a model, a transfer function, which is an approximate model, and we are absolutely certain, 100 percent certain, that our model is closed loop state. But do I really care about my model or my real system? Obviously, I care about my real system. So, looking at this plot and saying, yes, it's negative. Oh, darn it, this is not that close to that zero. Would you feel comfortable implementing this? Probably not. Why not? There's a good chance that even though the model is stable, since it's only an approximate model, the real system may be unstable. The subject of robustness has to do with guaranteeing that the actual system is stable, usually given some characterization of uncertainty, like the model parameters put some uncertainty, model parameters, and so on. That is still a subject of research and you can get very involved there. But there are a couple of very simple robustness old measures that can be used without any characterization of uncertainty, just by rules of thumb, that basically take into account, hey, I'm not confident it's that close. I want to have some distance between those two. And that reaches to the gain and the phase margin. These are, this is the next slide. And by the way, in class notes, we are starting APC7. Okay? But we only have, how many lectures? We have uh, two lectures next week, three more lectures, right? That's it. No more homework. Hmm? Only three more lectures. Oh, while well, I remember it, okay. Let me do a review, even though, you know, I'm kind of ambivalent when I will do the review before the exam. I will do it again after the other class, after the phase class, five, five o'clock, like I did it last time. Uh, Friday is the advantage that you have more time to study after the review. But I may not have covered everything. Uh, Monday's lecture may still have some stuff. I'll tell you what. Let me hold 